Today's lesson is on perimeters and areas of similar figures. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. We can use ratios to compare the perimeters and areas of similar figures. Theorem 10-7 shows us the relationship between the scale factor of similar figures and the ratio of their perimeters and the ratio of their areas. If the scale factor of two similar figures is A to B, then the ratio of their perimeters is also A to B, and the ratio of their areas is A squared to B squared. Notice that the scale factor of the two rectangles is 10 to 5 or 2 to 1. The perimeter of the larger rectangle is 32, and the perimeter of the smaller rectangle is 16 or 2 to 1. The ratio of the areas, base times height 60 to base times height 15, is 4 to 1, or 2 squared to 1 squared. In example 1, we will find the ratios in similar figures. The trapezoids are similar. The ratios of the lengths of the corresponding sides is 6 to 9, or 2 to 3. For part A, what is the ratio of the perimeters of the smaller figure to the larger figure? The scale factor of the smaller trapezoid to the larger trapezoid is 2 to 3, or A to B. Since the ratio of the perimeters is also A to B, the ratio of the perimeters will be 2 to 3. For part B, what is the ratio of the areas of the smaller figure to the larger figure? Remember, the scale factor is 2 to 3, or A to B. The ratio for the areas is A squared to B squared, or 2 squared to 3 squared. So the ratio of the areas is 4 to 9. Pause the video and do you try number 1. Two similar polygons have corresponding sides in the ratio 5 to 7. For part A, what is the ratio of the perimeters of the larger polygon to the smaller polygon? Since the scale factor of the larger polygon to the smaller polygon is 7 to 5, or A to B, and the ratio of the perimeters is also A to B, then the ratio for the perimeters is also 7 to 5. For part B, what is the ratio of the areas of the larger polygon to the smaller polygon? Remember, the scale factor of the larger polygon to the smaller polygon is 7 to 5, or A to B. The ratio of the areas is a squared to b squared, or 7 squared to 5 squared. So the ratio of the areas of the larger polygon to the smaller polygon is 49 to 25. When we know the area of one of two similar polygons, we can use a proportion to find the area of the other polygon. In example 2, we will find area using similar figures. The area of the smaller regular pentagon is about 27.5 centimeters squared. What is the best approximation for the area of the larger regular pentagon? Since the lengths of the corresponding sides are 4 to 10, the scale factor will be 2 to 5. Remember, our scale factor represents A to B. Since the ratio of our areas is A squared to B squared, the ratio will be 2 squared to 5 squared, or 4 to 25. Let's use the ratio of our areas to write a proportion to find the area of the larger pentagon. We know that whatever the area of our larger pentagon is, it will correspond with the larger number here, 25. We know that 27.5, or the area of our smaller pentagon, will correspond with the smaller number. So we will get the proportion 4 to 25 equals 27.5 to x, the area that we're trying to find. Now let's use the cross product property to help us solve for x. We'll multiply our extremes, 4 times x will give us 4x, and we'll multiply our means, 25 times 27.5, which is 687.5. Now divide both sides by 4, and x is approximately 171.9 centimeters squared. So the area of the larger pentagon 
is approximately 171.9 centimeters squared. Pause the video and do U-trend number two. The scale factor of two similar parallelograms is three to four. The area of the larger parallelogram is 96 inches squared. What is the area of the smaller parallelogram? Since we're looking for area, we want to use the ratio of the areas of the two parallelograms. Remember the ratio of the areas is a squared to b squared, or 3 squared to 4 squared. This will give us 9 to 16. Let's use the ratio of our areas to write a proportion to find the area of the smaller parallelogram. 9 to 16 will equal x to 96. Remember, the area of the larger parallelogram will correspond with the larger number in our area ratio. Let's solve for x by using cross product property and multiply the extremes. 9 times 96 equals 864. Now let's multiply the means. 16 times x gives us 16x. Divide both sides by 16 and x equals 54. So the area of the smaller parallelogram is 54 inches squared. In example 3, we will apply area ratios. During the summer, a group of high school students cultivated a plot of city land and harvested 13 bushels of vegetables that they donated to a food pantry. Next summer, the city will let them use a larger, similar plot of land. In the new plot, each dimension is 2.5 times the corresponding dimension of the original plot. How many bushels can the students expect to harvest next year? Since each dimension is 2.5 times larger in the new plot, our scale factor will be 1 to 2.5. This will equal a to b. Since the ratio of areas is a squared to b squared, our new ratio will be 1 squared to 2.5 squared, or 1 to 6.25. Let's use the ratio of the areas in a proportion to help us find how many bushels they should expect to find next year. Since the numerator is the portion of our ratio that represents the original plot, we're going to put 13 in the corresponding part of our second ratio, since 13 is the number of bushels they got in the original plot. Since we want to find out how many bushels they will get next year, they should expect to get next year, we're going to put x. Now let's use the cross product property to solve for x. Multiply the extremes, 1 times x, and that will equal the product of our means 6.25 times 13, or 81.25. Since x equals 81.25, the student should expect to harvest 81.25 bushels of vegetables. Pause the video and do U-trend number 3. The scale factor of two similar pieces of window glass is 3 to 5. The smaller piece costs $2.50. How much should the larger piece cost? Since our scale factor is 3 to 5, this represents A to B. Since window glass pertains to area, we are looking for the ratio A squared to B squared, or 3 squared to 5 squared. This gives us the ratio 9 to 25. Let's use the ratio of the areas to help us write a proportion to find out how much the larger piece of window glass should cost. Since $2.50 is the cost of the smaller piece of glass, I put that in the numerator where the smaller number in our area ratio is. Now let's use the cross product property to solve for x. Let's multiply the extremes, 9 times x, and then the means, 25 times 2.5. Divide both sides by 9, and since x is approximately equal to 6.94, the larger piece of window glass should cost approximately $6.94. When we know the ratio of the areas of two similar figures, we can work backward to find the scale factor and the ratio of their perimeters. In example four, we will find perimeter ratios. The two triangles below are similar. What is the scale factor? What is the ratio of their perimeters? Since the area of the two triangles are 50 and 98 centimeters squared, let's make an area ratio a squared to b squared equals 50 to 98. Since the ratio is not in simplest form, let's simplify it to 25 to 49. Since the scale factor is a to b, and we have a squared to b squared, 
we need to work backwards by taking the square root of a squared and the square root of b squared. So we will have the square root of 25 to the square root of 49. This will give us a scale factor of 5 to 7. Since the ratio of the perimeters is also a to b, the ratio of the perimeters will also be 5 to 7. Both the scale factor and the ratio of the perimeters are 5 to 7. Pause the video and do you try number 4. The areas of two similar rectangles are 1,875 feet squared and 135 feet squared. What is the ratio of their perimeters? Let's begin by simplifying the ratio of the areas to 125 to 9. Since this is the ratio of the areas, this is a squared to b squared. To find the ratio of the perimeters, we want to take the square root to find a to b. This will be the square root of 125 to the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. However, the square root of 125 is not a perfect square, so we need to write this in simplest radical form. Factors of 125 are 25 and 5. 5 is a prime number, so we'll circle it, but since 25 isn't, we'll find two other factors, 5 and 5. Since both of these are prime, we will stop. We have a pair of 5s that can come out of the radical, and the 5 that is alone will stay in the radical. So the ratio of the perimeters of the two similar rectangles is 5 radical 5 to 3. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions regarding the lesson check, please be sure to ask me in class. Go ahead and test your skills with the challenge problem. Take another minute to reread the learning goal and scale. See if you've climbed any higher on the scale since where you were before we began the lesson.